Hi, welcome to King Creation, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at those files um, that we had before um, where we've said exactly on our hard drive where they are, which is absolutely not good. Um, and I only did for brevity at the time, and I knew I would have this video coming up uh, soon, so I knew I would address it, so it's not so bad. Um, but um, from day one, when you're starting your games or applications, don't ever point to a specific place on your hard drive um, for files um, such as the array, the fonts, the text file, don't ever do that because there will you will try at the end to update all of them back and you'll always miss one um, and it's so easy to do. They'll be like, oh actually I used it there, damn it. And you'll send it to someone they'll say, hang on, level 3 didn't work or there wasn't any text on level 3 and you go back and look at it and you just didn't change it back. So start from start, and it's dead easy, um, and we're just going to go into this um, video um, about how to do it, and it's, it's really, really simple. I say it's really simple, but there's, I always forget whether it includes a forward slash or not, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Let's get to it. Um, so, yesterday's video we talked about the um, file structure we use. Um, so this is our application um, path here, this is our application folder. And uh, the application folder is just defined by where the uh, Click Team Fusion thing is. And then here is our assets folder, and this is all the bits that we want to import. And this is what we're going to do now. So let's go to the project that we used last week. And let's go to the expression editor. And the first thing I want to go through is the array. So if I click on the array at the top and look for where I've imported it, which is just here. We've got a, a dead line here. Let's get rid of that line. Okay. Alright, perfect. And there's a dead line here. Let's get rid of that as well. We don't want we don't want um code we don't want in our project clattering it up. So if you see here when I hover over it, it's just importing it straight to where it is on my computer, which is not at all good. So we want to completely change that. So I'm gonna edit it. Now you might think, well, how can I how can I change that? Well, it's this one here. You've got to click Use Expression and just get in the habit of doing it straight away. And we're going to want to get it from the Assets folder. And uh, then we want to load the array. Now, that is based on where we currently are um, where our project is currently um, based um, and then we want to go into the assets folder and then the array folder. Now if you're used to working with um, um, the internet and HTML and stuff you always use forward slash on Windows it's a backslash um, for folders weirdly so if I show you here if I click up here it's a backslash between them okay and if if you look at this this is this is the application folder assets and then array with a backslash between them. Right, now how do we tell Click Team we want our application um, folder? Well, just simply go in here, file names, application path name. And whenever you have um, a string, which this is, and you want to combine it with another string, the one we've written, you just put a plus down. It just tells Click Team to combine them. Now I can never remember whether this has a forward slash, oh sorry, backslash or doesn't. I don't think it does. But what I can do is I can copy that, and I can do start off frame, and I'm just going to set a global string, which is my global string B, to that, and we'll have a look. So run application, global string, and oh, it does. So I don't need to put that um, backward slash. It works anyway, as you can see, it's all loaded. But I can never remember that for some reason. <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And so it, it like it works fine having two, but it never works when you don't have one because it just combines the words together. So it won't be a valid um, file name. Okay, so where else have I used that? Well, I'm, I've saved the array. So I need to edit that. I can just paste that in. I just copied copied it from earlier because I knew I'd have to paste it in. Excellent. Okay. So that's the arrays sorted. 
Okay, where else have I used it? Well, I've used it in the fonts, uh, which I think I imported with this. Did I import it with this? Hmm. How did I import the font? Oh, yeah, okay. I did do it with that. It's just it doesn't say the path names, does it? So if I edit. Now, I'm just going to... I'm going to paste in what I had before and just change it. I'm just putting some spaces in so I can just see what's going on. So I copy that bit, paste that bit in, and then just delete everything else. Copy. Click OK. Now, if I'm, I enable the dialog box, and just check this worked. Um, and what I need to do is just um, hide the dev layer. Now this is going to be annoying because this thing won't hide because edit bo are these um, what they call combo boxes. They just permeate for everything, and that's true for like literally everything. They don't care about layers. They just they always appear. I don't know why. Um, how did I? Have I? Uh, how did I disable the dialog box? I disable the created start. Did that do it? Can't even remember. Yeah, it should do it. There we are, and that's perfect. So that's loaded our font perfectly. Excellent. Let's just not disable the created start. So I don't actually want that. And disable the dialog box. Always check that they've loaded. It's dead easy for them not to. Okay, right. Um, so that's the font sorted because it was only that object. And the last bit is the text file. So, oh, typical. Just after I've, well, I'll assume it works. So let's just load this in. We should probably check it works. So there's the string parser that loaded it and then all the rest of them used it from the string parser. Um, so I'm going to have to just work, I'm just going to have to check this works again. And... Oh. Oh, uh, where's it gone? Oh, that one. Should probably learn what these icons are. Find it easier just clicking through them. There we are. And let's shift. Yep. Yeah. Loading fine. Perfect. Um, okay, and let's just disable that because that's going to get irritating. And again, hide these. So just as you go along, get in the habit of not ever using that, that um, pop up. Don't ever. So if I just. Um, don't ever use this um, it's really tempting to because you're like oh it's just there and it will work in my game but you you won't ever find all the places that you've used it. I mean you've seen with this object um, you can't even see the fact that you've used it there because it doesn't come up with the file path so if I didn't remember if I hadn't done this kind of plan to do this and, and knew the three um, things that were being read and where they were being read, it would be very, very difficult to remember um, that I used um, the font there, um, for instance. So just do it from the start of the project and you will be fine. So uh, in the next two videos, we're going to be talking about actually compiling our finished game. I know that it's not finished, but um, this project is all about learning. It's not about you know, necessarily completing the game. Although, you know, maybe we will. <laughs> I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.